It's a beautiful spring morning here in the southern mountains of Appalachia. Corey and I uh, wanted to share a little update with you, but we're listening to the birds. They're, they're talking back and forth. Yeah, talking a lot. Yeah. Of course, they stopped just now, but yeah, <laughs> yeah. We what, right when we wanted you to hear them, they stopped. It's really pretty though this morning. Everything's greening up, greening out. Things are uh, trying to leaf out and grow, and we've got stuff blooming around us. So it's really a beautiful time of the year. Yeah. Busy time of the year too, though. We've got so much stuff to do. I feel like we're way behind. You feel like you're behind. Yeah, I feel like kinda. I'm behind. Me and Corey got all those wonderful plants from uh, Satterfield's Nursery, and we've not planted any of them, not the first mm -hmm. plant. So we've got them in the greenhouse. One reason is we hadn't had time because of that, but also we've had another little cold spell. Yeah. It's it's warming up today. Yesterday was, was downright chilly, and the day before yeah. started out really, really chilly. But it um, feels like today's going to be a much warmer day. So that's part of it, but two, just uh, too many things, too many irons in the fire, I guess. Too many things going on, but we're hopeful we're going to get some of them planted. Matt and I have made no more progress on the beds, the new beds on the bank. Uh, filling them is all we need to do. We've not made any progress. It's been raining when we when we were able to work. Our, uh, <coughs> excuse me. Matt's been, this is the time of the year, turkey season's opened in Georgia, so he's been doing some turkey hunting. Has Doesn't have anything yet. Austin's been doing some turkey hunting. So different little things going on that's kept us from uh, planting them all. And probably a good thing because it is still, we still have, you know, we'll, we'll still have some more hard freezes between now and um, true warm weather when it arrives. Our cabbage is growing. I look right, right behind the camera is my row of cabbage. It's doing really well. I mean, Matt hadn't covered it up yet, but it's doing really good. Uh, you can tell how much it's grown since we put it out there. Looking good. And my other little vegetables, early spring vegetables, are still doing good. And what do you got growing at your house, Corey? Have you got anything? I planted some lettuce, some kale. We planted some onions from seed. I don't usually do that. We do the onion bulbs. I have the onion bulbs. We haven't planted them yet. And then we have some strawberries in the green stalk. So I've seen just a tiny little bitty babies mm -hmm. coming up of the kale so far. Oh, and we planted potatoes, so yeah, we'll see about yeah. those. That was another thing I planted with Corey's help was I planted some more strawberries. Uh, the ones I, I'd mentioned in a video that a dear friend had given me a gift certificate to a nursery for Christmas. So I, And I'd spin it, and so those plants come in, and some of them were strawberries. And I was even able to share some with Corey. So, yeah. Yeah, so hopefully we'll both... Our strawberries will take off, and Corey helped me when we were uh, planting mine. I have them in the green stalks. We moved the green stalks out further into the yard just so they could have more sunshine, and just because we've had so much wet weather, just kind of where they were sitting was practically in a in a mud bog. So hopefully that'll help too. So one very exciting thing that's coming up that's going to probably make my life even busier for a little while, but it's all good, all wonderful, is that my cookbook is going to be out really soon, mine and Jim Casta's cookbook. In fact, we actually got the first copies, got to see them. I can't sell it uh, yet. I don't have all my copies to sell, but we actually got it, and we're just thrilled with how it turned out. It's full of... Um, I'll, I'll do another video when I actually... Uh, get to sell them, but you can see we've got some color photos. I was trying to find one of them, some really old historical photos and tons of recipes, over 200 recipes. So a lot of people's asked me, when can I buy them? When can I buy them? As soon as I have them available to sell, if you if you want to buy it directly from me, I will I will let everyone know, and you can buy it directly from me. They will be available across the country in different bookstores. Think of Books a Million and what some of the others, Corey. Um, Oh, there's a bookstore. Barnes & Noble? Yeah. Why are you Sarah? whispering? Because I didn't know if it was right. Yeah, Barnes & Noble. Say... Corey's Barnes like, and Barnes & Noble? Noble? Austin calls it Barnes & Nobles. And Barnes & Nobles. He's so sweet. And a lot of regional ones, too, I hope. So it'll be available in a lot of different places. But if you want to buy it directly from me, I will uh, definitely, as soon as I'm ready to sell them, I'll let you know. One thing Jim and I were so excited about the whole book, but we were really pleased that at Mass General Store, and we'll put a link to them in the description below, so if you've never been to a Mass General Store, there's one, the only one I've been to, and I've been to it 
over and over and over through the years is in Waynesville, North Carolina. And so how would you describe it, Corey? Think of it. It's, they've got clo everything from clothes to candy, really. Yeah, and Lots of kind of hiking stuff, some kitchen stuff. All kinds of kitchen basically stuff. Basically like a modern day general store. Yeah. Or like almost like yeah. a, what a, maybe a sundry store would have been like back in the day. Yeah. And the candy downstairs is in like big old barrels, yeah. you know. It's cool. Uh, we used to try to go every Christmas when we go to Papa's house for Christmas to the Presley, so... Um, it's a neat place. It's a neat place. Yeah, I got lots of nice things. And they have them in a variety of different places. I think I knew that, I knew the one in Waynesville, of course, and I think I knew that the it had originated in, um, I don't know if it's Boone or Sugar Grove there, but anyway, I knew that, but I didn't realize that they were in lots of different places. So they are, those stores are. And you'll have to leave a comment and tell us if you've ever been in one. But Jim and I are so thrilled that they're going to carry our book. And they've invited us to be part of, kind of do a book signing at uh, many of their locations. So we're really excited about that. So I want to share those dates with you. So in case you live nearby, maybe you could come out and meet us. We would love to meet That'd you. Cool. I hope Corey will be with me at most of them. I'm going to try to go to uh, Jim them. will be there, of course. So you can meet me and Jim. And hopefully Corey will be with me. And if she's not, uh, maybe Matt or, or Katie will be. But And I'll put this down in the description below so you can kind of uh, have something to look at. But on May 6th, that's the first one. That's coming up quick, isn't it? So we will be at that Waynesville, North Carolina location. And we'll be there from 12 until 3. 12 until 3. Then the next one is May 13th. And that's going to be not just a little bit past on past Waynesville. Uh, Hendersonville, North Carolina. We're going to be in Henderson, North Carolina. Hendersonville, North Carolina. From 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. And then May 27th. We're going to be in Knoxville, Tennessee at that Mass General store. And it's going to be from 11 till 2. Then June 10th, we're going to go all the way to Roanoke, Virginia, Corey. Roanoke, Virginia. Roanoke, Virginia. So, and that one will be um, 10 to 2. 10 to 2. They're all kind of midday, but that one's 10 to 2. Then June 17th, we're going to go all the way to Boone, North Carolina, and that one's going to be 11 till 2. And then that same day, we're going to go uh, from 3 to 6, we're going to go on to Sugar Grove to that Mass General store, and we'll be there from 3 to 6. So we'll put all that in the description below. But if you live near any of those places and you're available, we would love yeah, to meet come you. Yeah, out and say hey. Yeah, we'd love to meet you, and I know Jim would too, and uh, I promise you he'll have a he'll have a good story, and probably a joke or two it'll be a lot of fun we're looking yeah. looking forward to it for sure so now that we've shared a little cookbook update and some of those and there'll probably be other events and we'll be sure to mention those as we go along the publisher is really uh, promoting the book and we're so thankful for that they really think it has potential to do very well and so they're really trying to to get us in different locations and so that we can talk about it and people can talk directly to us and see the book and and you know um, learn more about why me and Jim thought it was so important to write this book and kind of I mean it's just so thrilling uh, to have Granny and Pap's recipes in here I know Jim feels the same way some of my recipes some of Miss Cindy's and I you know I love the pictures a lot of them is one or ones that I've taken over the years uh, and not all of them are color like that one little insert I showed but a lot of them are ones that I've took over the years Corey's took some of them Katie's took some of them uh, of course, some of them are gems, too. But over my years of writing for Blind Pig and the Acorn, my blog, you know, it, I've, I've amassed a, a huge photo collection, really, that documents our lives, you know, from whether it was somebody making cornbread to someone standing in the garden with, you know, something fresh from the garden. Or even Katie cutting her finger. <laughs> yeah, even Katie cutting her finger or something like that. Yeah, mm. we've documented that. That's not in the cookbook, don't no. worry. You won't have, you won't <laughs> have to see that. But she was cutting corn. That's yes, how she, that's she was. True. We were putting up corn when she cut her finger, so... Um, if you've ever noticed her finger, it's we call it the Halloween or what? It's like hyper extended, so yeah. this is what her finger yeah. looks like because yeah. it's messed up. It's really amazing she can play the fiddle and yeah. do her jewelry and all that. And and she did eventually have surgery uh, like a year later. Uh, that was one of the incidents I think we've told before. But she she was told not to touch the knife. Corey and Katie, we were all working. They had to help us. They were helping. We were spread out in the basement, and they were supposed to be shucking the corn while me and Matt done the, you know, Cut anything with a knife or whatever. And Papa Tony called, and Matt had to go outside to talk to him. I think it was Papa Tony. It might have been somebody else, but I think it was. And he told Katie, do not touch that knife. 
and she was what? Were y'all 12, 11. 11? Okay, 10, so she 11. was old enough to, should have listened. Should have listened. But she didn't. She didn't, and she got the knife, and she cut herself. And it had just been sharpened the night before. Yeah, for so the for the corn, corn yeah. purpose of so the corn. So I did what I always do in those days. Uh, once we got it to quit bleeding and all that, I took her to Pap. And uh, funny, he said, I said, do you think I should take her to the doctor? And he said, why, they'd sew up a mosquito bite. <laughs> You don't need to take her. So I didn't take her. Mm. Well, it wasn't long. And I really don't think that they might have figured out that her tendon was cut, but I don't know but if they, they would have or not. That. No, they couldn't have. Anyway, but I didn't take her. And then it soon became evident that something had been cut. And we was just like, oh, well, it's, you know, it's uh, too late. There's nothing that can be done about it. And I should have took her, but I didn't. And, and then it was at, like at a regular checkup or something, their pediatrician uh, saw, noticed Katie's finger and said, what happened? And I told him and told him I didn't take her and, you know, it healed up and it's too late. And he said, actually, it's not too late. So, so that's how she was still able to have surgery. And it didn't fix it completely, but she did get much more movement yeah, much out, more of out of yeah, it. Much more motion out of it, maybe 80% instead of like yeah. 20 that she had. Yeah. Anyway, all that to say, we're excited about those pictures in the book. I, I'm also really pleased that those historic photos, they come from Western Carolina University, and there's a lot from uh, different areas of Western North Carolina, but specifically Swain County, and then also some from Brasstown of Gid Laney. I have a wonderful video, I'll link to it, where I interview David Anderson about the Gid Laney photo collection, and I'm, I'm just thrilled that he's in it, that p part of Brasstown is, uh, ended up in the book. So we're pretty pleased with how everything's turned out. And we hope if you buy a cookbook, you'll be pleased too. So now that we've kind of talked about that, some other things that we, I wanted to talk about was one of the things was the um, several videos we've kind of talked about uh, was we had a cold, that was it. And we, somehow we mentioned neti pots, that we all use neti pots. I've never used them till recently. Well, and what we're using actually, though, is not a, well, your daddy, daddy is using a neti but pot. But we're using the, it's like a squeeze. It's a squeeze, and I can't remember the name just now. It's Medi something. There's yeah. different brains, but yeah. we're using the actual squeeze bottle, yeah. not the pot. Right, but so many people were worried about us, so we wanted to, to tell you that we we did know that you're not supposed to just use regular tap water. Right. You have to use distilled, distilled water. water. Um, so we were aware of that, and um, we were doing it on a doctor's recommendation, or I wasn't, because I I just now started doing it, but uh, Katie was doing it under doctor supervision. She got us all to doing it. So uh, we definitely were aware of that, and if you do want to use one, then you should do your research and find out, but to know that you do need to use yes. either distilled water or boil your water. That's I would probably still use distilled yeah. Yeah, but that's uh, just me. anyway, but we didn't want people to be worried about us. People we did. were like, you're going to get yeah. a brain-eating amoeba. Yeah, we wanted to <laughs> make sure, and, and to tell other people, too, so yes. that if you don't know, that is good, that you should be very careful with what water you use. And you want to use the distilled water anyway, because tap water is going to burn you. It's going to burn your nose. Yeah, you think so? Mm -hmm. I've only I used the would. distilled, and I've only been doing it. I only did it during that cold because I was miserable, and they kept on. And it's not as bad as what I thought. I thought it was... You know, nobody likes to think of swimming. Nobody likes to get water up their nose and uh, get strangled. And I thought it would make me feel like that. It doesn't. Mm -hmm. uh, it doesn't. So, and it really does, especially with a cold or something. Oh, open it's amazing. Up your, it's uh, amazing. Too. And since Katie has started doing it regularly, she suffers from allergies. Her allergies have almost disappeared. So she says, it's great. I can bend over now without almost passing out because right, she would get dizzy pressure. with all the pressure. Her ears would just get... Packed. so inflamed and uh, so much pressure in them that she had suffered from a lot of dizziness especially when she'd bend over or move quickly so it's almost totally erased that so that's that's wonderful uh, one other thing i wanted to mention was so many people on all of our videos ask of course uh, you know where did you get that what do you use for this what do you use for that and I try to answer people back, but it's, you know, I know that I miss people and I'm very sorry if you ask me something and I missed it. I, I do try my best, but it's, it's sometimes it's, um, there's not enough hours in the day, but then other times I think there's, you know, YouTube is such a huge platform that there's weird glitches that happen that maybe oh, yeah. you see something that we can't see or we see something that, that you can't see. see. It's one of those weird uh, kind of internet glitches, you know, um, so because of so many people asking me, I did start a page uh, on Amazon so that you can kind of see like what are my favorite uh, kitchen things that I use, what are my favorite gardening things, even books, what books do I love, you know, and of course they're going to be about Appalachia. 
um, or something in that nature. Most all of them are really though about Appalachia. It's not like I don't I don't remember if I did put fiction. It's it's again about Appalachia, but and even my music. I don't know if anybody be interested in that. But I've had people, a few people, ask. You know, well, what do you listen to? Who do you listen to? So you can kind of see what I listen to there. Uh, and I'll give you a big hint. It's it's mostly old <laughs> old music. Uh, is mostly what I listen to. But anyway, you can go and uh, we'll leave that link below and you can go over there and kind of see my favorite things. And I know a lot of people don't like Amazon and that's okay. What you could do if it is a book or something like that you're interested in, go find it somewhere else. If you're, you know, if you're interested in, in seeing what I like to read or listening to the music or anything like that. Or the kitchen, you know, whether it's a, a knife or a uh, like the what I keep my bacon grease in, anything like that, you're free to just see what it is and go find it somewhere else. If you do buy it though on Amazon, I'm required to tell you that I, I get a small amount from Amazon. It doesn't cost you anything extra. It just is like I'm um, what affiliate, right? Commission. An affiliate commission. It's no extra charge to you. It just means that they give me a little bit um, just to cause you actually I told you to go look and then you ended up buying it. Another so. neat thing, though, worth mentioning is that, uh, just to support Mama here, is that even if you click that item, let's say it was like a garden tool, and you go to Amazon, and you're like, I don't need a garden tool, but I need some toilet paper, or whatever it is you need. The cool thing yeah. about Amazon affiliate is that you'll still make a commission from that because you've got people to Amazon. So I'm just saying. Oh, well, thank Be you. Be using Mama's links. Thank you. <laughs> uh, I feel really weird even yeah, saying that, I but I do have so many people asking, like, what's this? What do you like about this? What do you like about that? And I, I you know, it, I just thought, well, maybe it would be easier if I could just put it all in one place and say, oh, we'll Here's go here. One. Um, and I guess I could make a long list somewhere, but it's just so easy when you can just say, here's the knives I use, here's the bowls I like, I like this, here's the music I listen to, here's some of my favorite books. Um, so anyway, uh, we'll put that down below if you're interested, and if you're not, that's okay too. And then one other thing about just talking still about the uh, videos is that a few people have asked me about the closed caption, like if, you, if we're hard to understand or sometimes our videos are not the... Uh, audio's not the best or something like that and you just need to you want to see what we're saying as we say it in the help me describe this Corey like in your little video screen at the bottom you've got all these little controls we'll look for the little square that says CC. CC and if you click on that then it'll bring up the words so then the words will go across the screen while I'm talking and a lot of people do know that and they use it but sometimes uh, they think that I have them turned off and I'd never turn them off, they're there. But what happens is when you first publish a video, it takes YouTube, I don't, I mean, I, again, it's such a big platform, you can't say if it just takes an hour or two or sometimes it might take even overnight for them to actually populate that, for them to actually put that there. So if you're watching one of my videos and you really wish that was there, if it's just been published, maybe come back in a few hours or even the next day or something, and then, you, then the captions should be there. Um, I will warn you, which is the way with any captions, unless you're typing them in yourself, is that sometimes YouTube doesn't quite understand my, my accent and my words, so that might be a little bit off, but it'll still help you get the gist of it if you're having a hard time listening or, or hearing what we're saying. Corey's awful interested in something. What are you interested in? We hear a hawk. Yeah, I hear I a can hawk. Hear, we can hear hawks in on the ridge across from us you over see there. Them, you see them a lot uh, out here, so I'm, I hear and I'm looking to see if I can see it. I, I hear them. I don't them. see it, but I sure hear it. Such a beautiful day makes me want to head up there and see if we can find them and stomp, stalk around through the woods yeah. and I love walk near the creek. Hops. Love to hear them and see them. We will, as we close, um, share one more thing with you, just to ask you if you're a praying person to pray. Mm. Don't know if I can say it without crying, but... Mm. This past weekend, my sister-in-law's, Kim, her youngest sister, Chrissy, and her daughter were killed in a car wreck. It's just really, really sad. Really hard time for their family. Uh, please pray for them if you're a praying person. They will be sorely missed by many people. Many people. Uh, very two sweet, sweet souls. Uh, and this is one of those things in life you can't understand. You don't know why it happened. 
Uh, but if you're a believer, you know, we believe we'll see both of them again. Uh, later today will be their funeral, and we're going to play at it, which is going to be really tough, but um, we're honored that they ask us, and, um, yeah. and, and we know God will give us the strength yeah, to do it. So. Yeah, yeah, it'll be very tough, but, but no, nothing like what her family's going through, and uh, just especially remember them, uh, Eddie and Eric and Jaron, for sure. Yeah. We'd appreciate prayers. Yeah. So we thank you, though, for coming along for the update, the exciting news about the cookbook. And uh, maybe it'll make you feel a little bit better to know me and Corey's behind in our gardening. We just had <laughs> so much going on. and uh, But it is, too, like I was saying, the weather. I keep reminding. Maybe I'm just giving myself a pep talk. Yeah, pep talk on that, saying no. Now the weather's not perfect yet, no. anyway. So you need to wait. Yeah, which I'm not talking about planting tomatoes and things like that. It's just all those flowers and then filling all those beds. Um, so hopefully this weekend, me and Matt can can uh, do some work I'll on that. I'll be here to help you fill the yeah, beds this weekend. Uh, Austin's going off hunting with his going daddy, so Corey will be here with us to work on the beds and maybe we'll get all uh, of a little shovel and she can yeah yeah she could get out there with her big paws she with her big dig. paws yeah. she sure could yeah. she could uh, we hope too we'd go ahead and wish you a wonderful easter we have a big easter planned we're gonna we'll be playing at a church for easter and it's granny's home church so there'll be good food <laughs> always the best food ever at shady grove and uh, then that evening we're going to have a family get together at my nephew's house so that will also be very nice and we wish you a wonderful Easter and uh, as always thank you for stopping by to help us celebrate Appalachia.